Hi there! You are watching a video of pressure vessels in industrial plants. There are different ways to support pressure vessels, depending on numerous factors location, space available, uh, process, operation, etc. The three types of supports most used in pressure vessels are skirts, legs and saddles. In terms of supports, the critical equipment are vertical, slender and large diameter horizontal vessels. It is worth mentioning that in some cases, horizontal vessels are supported on sand beds. This is a common practice for buried horizontal pressure vessels. In other cases, horizontal pressure vessels are placed on concrete or steel piers. The design of the saddles in this case is exactly the same. The only consideration to take into account is that the loads transmitted to these piers must be minimized so that the cross section is as small as possible. The normal practice for supporting horizontal pressure vessels is by means of saddles. A horizontal pressure vessel supported on saddles acts like a simple supported beam with the following considerations. Loading conditions are different when the vessel is fully or partially filled. Stresses are a function of the support angle of the saddles. The loads generated by the vessel's own weight are combined with other loads. Usually, horizontal pressure vessels are supported on two saddles. The use of more than two saddles is unnecessary and should be avoided. Using more than two saddles it is normally a stress-related issue, which can be solved in a more convenient manner. Longitudinal location of the saddles has a large effect on the vessel design. There are numerous publications or recommendations regarding location of the saddles. As a general design guideline, it is a good engineering practice to locate the saddle at 20% of the length of the shell, L in the picture. From the tangent line of the vessel, obviously. Also, the recommended support angle for the saddle is 120 degrees. Saddles are basically formed by five fundamental elements as shown in the figure. Reinforcement pad, ribs, base plate, anchor bolts, and the web. Through good engineering practices and numerous lessons learned, it is customary to design saddles according to job specifications and customer standards. Depending on the dimensions of the equipment, the configuration of the saddle to support the vessel is chosen. The standard shown below applies to most pressure vessels supported by saddles. However, each of the elements must be checked. One of the most important aspects of the design of saddles for horizontal vessels is the forces induced in the shell. To check the tensional state of the shell, normally the thick method is followed. Thick's work to determine stresses in the shell of pressure vessels gained such relevance that it was adopted and published by the ASME code for pressure vessels. 
methodology for the determination of the stresses in the shell and heads of a horizontal pressure vessel supported on saddles was first published in 1951 by L.P. Sick. Saddle supported horizontal cylindrical vessels are under the following loadings and stresses. Bending, longitudinal stress, tangential shear stress, and circumferential compression and bending stress. If the results of six analyses show that the stress level in the shell is higher than the allowable, good practices to solve this situation are the following. Increase the support angle to 150 degrees. Return to 120 degrees design move the saddles closer to the heads, this way the stiffness provided by the heads is used. Keep the saddles closer to the heads, increase the angle of support up to 150 degrees. Return to the original location of the saddles and place stiffening rings in the plane of the saddles. A pressure vessel operating at high temperature would suffer a thermal expansion. To absorb this displacement, one of the saddles, the opposite from the main nozzle's location, preferably, should be left free to move. The free saddle must be provided with slots instead of holes for the anchor bolts. The length of the slots should be determined according to the magnitude of the expected displacements.